We are in Chapter 2, Differentiation, Basic Concepts. Section 2.1 is the derivative. One of the main applications of calculus is determining how one variable changes in relation to another. First thing that we have is the average rate of change. And this is between two points, and we'll say a f of a and b f of b is given by, and if you notice, this is just our slope formula from algebra. The average rate of change is the same as the slope of a line segment connecting two points. This is the slope of the secant line. The first example here says find the average rate of change for the function y equals negative 4x squared minus 6 between x is 2 and x is 6. So we need to find f of 6 and f of 2. And in order to do that, we're just going to substitute both of those values into our function, which is negative 4x squared minus 6. When we do that with 6, we get negative 150. And when we substitute 2 into our function, we get negative 22. In order to find our average rate of change, we need to have f of 6 minus f of 2 all over 6 minus 2, which works out to being negative 150 minus negative 22 divided by 4, which works out to being negative 128 divided by 4, or negative 32. A tangent line to a point on a curve is a straight line that only touches the curve at a single point. Near that point, it touches or grazes the curve, and you can see that in the diagram right next to the definition. The graph below shows a tangent line at point P and the secant line joining points P and Q. So again, a secant line joins two points, and a tangent line just touches that graph at one point. So if you notice in the first picture, P and Q are relatively farther apart from one another, but as Q gets closer and closer and closer to P, that secant line is getting really close to becoming the tangent line. So notice how as point Q moves closer to P, the distance between A and X is getting smaller, and the slope of the secant line is looking more and more like the slope of this tangent line. A derivative measures the steepness of the graph of a function at some particular point on the graph. Therefore, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line at any given point, the derivative also represents the instantaneous rate of change, and the derivative is the limit of the difference quotient. The derivative of a function f at a number c to the curve y equals f of x at point c comma f of c is the line through point p with slope f prime of c equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h provided that the limit exists. So this is our difference quotient, and now we're taking the limit of it as h is approaching zero. The notation f prime of x is read f prime of x, and the function f prime of x is called the derivative of f with respect to x. If x is a value in the domain of f and f prime of x exists, then f is differentiable at x, and the process that produces f prime is called differentiation. Next example says to sketch tangent lines, which again only touch the graph at one point, to f of x at each of the following x values. Determine whether their slope will be positive, negative, or zero at each x value. So the first x value that we have is at negative six. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a point at negative six on my graph the best I can. And tangent line is just going to touch that point once. It just grazes the graph. And if you notice that this has a negative slope, the next value that we have is when x is negative 2. When x is negative 2, I'm going to go ahead and put a point there, drawing my tangent line to that point, which just touches that graph at that one point, and x is negative 2. And this one has a positive slope. At x is 2, I'm going to put a point, draw a tangent line there that is also negative. And then at 4, 
I'm going to go ahead and draw a, put a point there and draw my tangent line there. And that is horizontal and horizontal has a zero slope. The instantaneous rate of change is the rate of change at a particular moment which is the slope of the tangent line to a curve at a given point. And so if you notice, this is the same definition that we saw earlier for our derivative. And then some notation down here and wording. The function f of c is increasing if the derivative f prime is positive and decreasing if the derivative f prime of c is negative. And we saw that when we were looking up above. And we have difference quotient versus derivative. So a difference quotient is just f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h, whereas the derivative is taking the limit of that difference quotient. Different words that are going to show up in different word problems. So slope of a secant line. Anytime you see anything say secant line, that means that we are talking about the difference quotient, average rate of change, average velocity, average rate of change of cost, revenue, or profit. Anytime you see that word average, we are just using the difference quotient or just calculating this along the lines of slope. Whereas a derivative is where you take the limit of the difference quotient. This is where you would talk about a tangent line, instantaneous rate, instantaneous velocity, or marginal is going to be our keyword, especially for our business problems. So marginal cost, marginal revenue, or marginal profit. The next example that we have says to find the instantaneous rate of change for the function in the given value. And we have a function f of x equals negative 4x squared minus 6, that x is equal to 2. And so in order to do this problem, we're going to go ahead and write down our derivative or our instantaneous rate formula, which is listed up above. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, and we have the limit. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And our value for this problem is going to be 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as f prime of 2 is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. So from here we have the limit as h approaches 0 of, and to find our f of 2 plus h, we need to substitute that into our function, which is listed up above. So we're going to have negative 4, 2 plus h squared minus 6, minus, and now we have to find f of 2. And finding f of 2, we're going to just substitute in 2. So we have negative 4, 2 squared minus 6, and then all divided by h. From here, don't forget to write your limit. Make sure you check to make sure you have that on every single step like we did before. I'm going to go ahead and multiply out 2 plus h squared. And so we have negative 4, and then we have 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 6 minus, and working this out, we get negative 16 minus 6, all divided by h. From here, I'm going to go ahead and continue my work up above. I'm going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of, then go ahead and distribute through my negative 4, and we have negative 16 minus 16h minus 4h squared minus 6 and plus 22 all over h. And so we have a negative 16, a negative 6, and a positive 22. So those will all cancel out and sum to 0. So now we have the limit as h approaches 0 of... I'm going to go ahead and factor out in h. And if you want, you can also factor out a negative 4 and an h. And we're left over with 4 minus plus h divided by h. And those h's will cancel. From here, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 4, 4 plus h 
I'm going to go ahead and use our direct substitution and have negative 4 times 4 plus 0, which works out to be negative 16. And if you look at this from the beginning, you could not have evaluated this at h equals 0 because if you had, you would have ended up with 0 over 0. And from before, we know that that means we'd have to be able to simplify this, and we did. By doing that, we multiplied this out, combined our like terms, and canceled out um, factors that we could to simplify this. The next example that we have, we're going to go ahead and circle, and we'll work on that one together in class. The next definition that we have is a tangent line. It says, assume that f of x is differentiable at x equals c. The tangent line to the graph of y equals f of x at the points x is c is the line through c comma f of c with slope f prime of c with the equation given by y minus f of c equals f prime of c times x minus c. This is actually a formula you've seen before. It's just written a little bit different from when we saw it in algebra. So this would be the same as our point slope form, which is going to be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. If you notice, f prime of c is just your slope, and our value c is our x part of our ordered pair, and f of c is the y part of our ordered pair. Types of non-differentiability. A continuous function is not differentiable at cusp, vertical tangents, and corners. And there's diagrams right below that show all three of those. If f is differentiable at c, then f is continuous at c. Differentiability implies continuity. If f is differentiable at x equals c, then f is continuous at x equals c. If a function is discontinuous at x equals c, then it is non-differentiable at x equals c. Note, continuity does not guarantee differentiability. The next section that we have is 2.2, techniques of differentiation. Using the definition to calculate the derivative is a very long and tedious process. We will now develop rules that make calculating the derivative much easier. Notation for the derivative. The derivative of y equals f of x may be written in any of the following ways. So we've already seen f prime of x. Another one that shows up a lot is going to be dy dx. And then we also have d dx of our function. And then d with a little sub x of f of x. The dy dx notation for the derivative is read the derivative of y with respect to x. So the first rule that we have is the derivative of a constant function. And the derivative of a constant function is just 0. So that's saying that the slope of a constant function is 0. So definitely one of the ones we need to know. The next rule that we have is called the power rule. It says if n is any real number, then the derivative of x to the n is going to become n times x to the n minus 1. This is another big rule for us to know. The next thing that we have is the constant multiple rule says if c is a constant and f is a differentiable function, then the derivative of c times f of x is just the same as saying c times the derivative of your function with respect to x. For use with the power rule, that c just stays there and is multiplied by n, and again that exponent is subtracted by 1. So that's our constant multiple rule. Next, we have some examples. The first is going to be if f of x equals negative 2, then find your derivative f prime of x. So f prime of x, since this is just a constant value, is just going to be 0. The next example says if f of x is equal to negative 3x, find dy dx. So dy dx. And from this, you guys have negative 3x to the first. So if you think of this as negative 3 times 1 times x to the 1 minus 1, which is going to become 0, this is just going to work out to be negative 3. And then the last one that we have is the square root of t. And for any kind of radical or any kind of variable where you have in the denominator, you need to rewrite it as an exponent. And 1 half is equivalent to the square root of t. And so this is asking for us to find dy dt. Also notice it's dt because we're taking this derivative with respect to our variable t, not x. 
And so we're going to have 1 half t to the 1 half minus 1. So this works out to be 1 half t to the negative 1 half. And we usually don't leave exponents as fractions or, rat or rational values. And we also don't leave them as negative values. So negative means that it's going to move to the denominator. So we're going to have 1 over 2 t to the 1 half. And then rewriting this as a root instead of as a rational exponent, we're going to have 1 over 2 times the square root of t. The next set of rules we have is called the sum and difference rules. If f and g are both differentiable, then we could take the derivative of f and g separately, and that sign in between them would just stay the same. So the first example that we have is find the derivative of each function. The first one is y equals 3x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 5x minus 7. So taking the derivative of these, I'm going to go ahead and write dy dx. Again, you could put y prime. There's a lot of different things you can do. So we have a 3 times 4, x to the 4 minus 1, minus 2 times 3, x to the 3 minus 1, plus 5 times 1, x to the 1 minus 1. And then since this minus 7 is just a constant, that's just going to become a 0. Simplifying this, I'm going to have 12x to the 3rd minus 6x squared plus 5. And this is going to be our derivative. This is our dy dx. The second one that we have, it looks a little different. First of all, our sum and difference rule only works when you have a plus and a minus, not a quantity squared. So I need to actually simplify this before I can actually take the derivative. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out and do 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, which works out to being 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. I need to find the derivative of this. And so to do this, I'm going to go ahead and have 4 times 2x to the first minus 4. And again, that plus 1 is just going to become a 0. This works out to be 8x minus 4. This is our derivative. Part C on the next page looks a little different. It does not look the same as what we saw with the sum and difference rule. This one actually has a division symbol in it with a variable underneath. So again, I'm going to have to simplify this. Then we write this as t cubed plus 2t to the 1 half power. I'm going to divide each of these terms by t, and then from here just simplify. So I'm going to have this as written as t squared, again subtracting my exponents, plus 2, and this is to the first, so 1 half minus 1 is going to be t to the negative 1 half. So finding our derivative, I'm going to go ahead and write p prime of t is going to be 2 t to the 2 minus 1 plus 2 times negative 1 half t to the negative 1 half minus 1. And then from here, simplifying, we have 2t minus t to the negative 3 over 2. And then again, rewriting this correctly, the negative means that that value is going to move to the denominator. It's going to become the root of t cubed. I'll circle our derivative. D, we're going to go ahead and circle and work on that one together in class. The next example says, at what points on the graph of f of x is the slope of the tangent line equal to 9? So in order to find the slope of the tangent line, we have to have a derivative. So I'm going to find the derivative first. And so finding our derivative... I'm going to try not to write it out as much as I have in the previous ones, and you guys kind of take some time to get used to this, but we're going to have 3x to the second plus 6 times 2 would be 12x to the first plus 21x is just going to be 21, and the derivative of 2 is just going to be 0. And I want to know when the slope 
of the tangent line, which is f prime of x, that's all that that is, is equal to 9. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is equal to 9. In order to do this, I'm going to have to move everything over to one side. So I have 3x squared plus 12x plus 12 is equal to 0. I'm going to factor out a 3 and a 3x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. From here, I'm going to go ahead and factor this. So I have a 3. This factors to x plus 2 and x plus 2 equals 0. Solving this, you get x is equal to negative 2. So this is our x value, but it is asking for points. And so points is going to be x comma y. So to find our y value, I need to substitute that into my original function. So I have to find f of negative 2. So substituting it back up into our original function, f of x again is the same thing as y. And so we get y is equal to, working this out, negative 24. So our ordered pair that we have, where the slope of the tangent line is equal to 9, is going to be negative 2 comma negative 24. The next example says that what x values is the graph of the function where the tangent line is horizontal. So when it's horizontal, this means that our slope is equal to 0, or our derivative which is also the slope of the tangent line, is also equal to 0. So first thing I need to do is I need to take a derivative of our function. So we have f prime of x equals 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. And we are going to set this equal to 0. From here, we're going to factor this. This factors as 3x plus 1 and x plus 1 is equal to 0. Solving both of these, we get 3x plus 1 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. So we get x is equal to negative 1 third, and x is equal to negative 1. So these are our two x values that we have. Again, this problem only asks for x values, not y values. But if it did, we would have to plug these x values back into our original function in order to get our y values. The next thing we have is marginal analysis. In economics, it's important to study the rate of change of a variable such as cost, revenue, and profit. Since the derivative of a function gives the rate of change of the function, the marginal cost, revenue, or profit also, is found by taking the derivative of the cost or the revenue or profit function. The marginal cost, again, revenue or profit, is approximately the cost or the revenue or profit of producing one more unit. So this is for producing one more unit. Remember that profit is equal to revenue minus cost. And we have a demands function, which relates the number of units Q of an item that consumers are willing to purchase to the price P. So we have R of Q is equal to Q times P or Q times D of Q. So the first example that we have is to suppose that the total cost in hundreds of dollars, and again, we've seen this already, but most of these problems have different units, so you need to be aware of that, to produce X hundred ounces of cheese is given by, and we have a C function, and again, this is the total cost. Find and interpret the marginal cost at X equals 10. So we need to find it and interpret it at X is equal to 10. And this is in 100 ounces of cheese. So we need to find the marginal cost. So in order to find the marginal cost, we need to take the derivative of our function. So taking the derivative, we get 15x squared minus 20x. Again, derivative of 75 is a constant. That is just going to be 0. And it wants us to figure out the marginal cost for x is equal to 10. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in 10 into our derivative. So we have 15 times 10 squared minus 20 times 10. Working this out, we get 1,300. You need to be aware of the units. And this is talking about our cost. And our cost is in money, but our money values that we have up here is hundreds of dollars. So we'll go ahead and write hundreds of dollars. And so you can leave it like this, or you can add on those two zeros that we have for 100. Or you can have this written as $130,000. And 
It also says to interpret this. And so after 10 hundred ounces of cheese has been produced, and that's our X value. Again, X is in hundreds ounces of cheese. The cost to produce one more hundred ounces of cheese is $130,000. The next example says the demand function is given by P equals 16 minus 1.25Q. Find the marginal revenue and interpret your results when Q is equal to 5 units and P is in dollars. So in order to find our marginal revenue, we need to first find our revenue function. So revenue is equal to Q times P. And in this problem, we have Q times P, and P is given to us as 16 minus 1.25 Q. I am going to have to multiply this out, and we get 16 Q minus 1.25 Q squared. Going ahead and taking our derivative of our revenue function, we will get our marginal revenue. This works out to being 16 minus 1.25 times 2 is 2.5q. And we need to figure this out when q is equal to 5. So our marginal revenue when we have 5 is going to be equal to 16 minus 2.5 times 5 which works out to being 3.5. So we also need to interpret this. So the next item sold at sales of five units, that was our value of Q, will produce Additional revenue of three dollars and fifty cents. The next definitions that we have on here are relative and percentage rate of change. The relative rate of change of a quantity Q of X with respect to X is given by the ratio the derivative of Q divided by Q, the corresponding percentage rate of change of Q of X with respect to X is, we have 100 times that same exact relative rate of change we had right above. So the next example that we have says Gary's start, starting salary is $45,000 and he gets a raise of $2,000 each year. Part A says express the percentage rate of change of Gary's salary as a function of time. So Gary's salary, I'll call it G, is equal to the base salary, which is a starting salary of $45,000, plus he gets $200 or $2,000 every year. And I'm going to go ahead and call our years T. So finding our derivative of Gary's earnings with respect to time is going to work out to being 2000. So this has to express the percentage rate of change of Gary's salary as a function of time. And so we have our derivative, which is 2000, divided by our function, which is Gary's salary, which is 45,000 plus 2000 T. And again, it wants it as a percentage rate. So we're going to multiply this by 100. So say to leave it as a function of time, so that means that we are leaving it in terms of t. 
Part B says at what percentage rate will Gary's salary increase after one year? So going ahead and substituting in T is equal to one. We're going to have 2,000 divided by 45,000 plus 2,000 times one. And then times 100. And we get 4.26%. The next section that we have is section 2.3, which is product and quotient rules and higher order derivatives. More complex functions will need additional tools in order to differentiate them. So the first rule that we have here is called the product rule. The product rule says if f and g are differentiable functions, then f times g is also differentiable. And the derivative of f times g is equal to f times the derivative of g plus g times the derivative of f or the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then note, there's a thing that you cannot do down here, so do not do that, where you distribute your derivative to both of those values in the parentheses. So the next page has examples. The second example we're going to go ahead and circle, and we'll work on that one together during our mini Zoom lectures. So the first example says find the derivative of f of x equals 3x squared minus 1 times x to the fourth minus 3. So you could multiply this out and then use exactly what we've done before and take our derivative just as it is. But we're going to go ahead and look at these two things. I'm going to call the first one my value of u. So this will be 3x squared minus 1. And I'm going to call my second term there v. So v is going to be equal to x to the fourth minus 3. So in order to do this, I need to find my derivative of u, which is just going to be 6x, and I have to find the derivative of v, which is going to be 4x to the third. Now in order to take my derivative of my function, which is f prime of x, I'm going to multiply the first thing times the derivative of the second, which is just these two along this way. And so I have u times v prime plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is going to be v times u prime. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in all the values that we have here. So I have u, which is 3x squared minus 1. v prime is 4x cubed plus v, which is going to be x to the fourth minus 3. v prime is going to be 6x. From here, we're going to distribute this. We end up with 12x to the 5th minus 4x cubed plus 6x to the 5th minus 18x. Combining my like terms, we end up with 18x to the 5th minus 4x to the 3rd minus 18x. And this is our derivative. This is our f prime of x. So this is dealing with when we have products. We also have another set of rules down here, which is the quotient rule, which is when we're dividing. So if f and g are differentiable functions, then f divided by g is differentiable for all x such that g of x is not equal to 0. And so we have the derivative of f divided by g of x. This is definitely a formula that you need to have memorized. Is going to be g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x divided by g of x squared. Or you can use the little way to remember this as low d high minus high d low over low squared. And also note that this is not okay to do is distribute a, a little prime. So we have two examples again. First one we're going to work out together and then the second one we'll leave as a one to do together with our Zoom lecture. So in order to find the derivative of this, I'm going to write dy dx. We're going to do low. So low is going to be our denominator. And so we have 5x minus 1 times the derivative of the top, which is 2, minus our top, our high, times the derivative of the bottom, which is just 5, divided by the denominator squared. From here we need to distribute this and clean this up. So we have 10x minus 2 minus 
10x minus 15, all divided by 5x minus 1 squared. And again, this is going to simplify our 10x's. 1 positive, 1 negative equals 0. So we get negative 17 divided by 5x minus 1 squared. And again, this is our derivative. This is our dy dx. The next example that we have on page 8, we're also going to go ahead and circle that one, and we will work on this one together in class.